Today we're looking at a special beer that came from Molson Coors. This is John R. Molson and Sons 1908 Historic Pale Ale. Now, uh, the beer is unfiltered. There is a yeast cake in there. Uh, I don't think I have a cup big enough to get the yeast cake out, so we'll just uh, do this a little bit with it. So this historic pale ale is supposed to be a reenactment of a beer that they would have brewed in 1908. Um, what is it? 6.8% alcohol by volume, 625 milliliter bottle, a brew from Montreal. Uh, let's open up this little thing and see if we can read any of it. It's a strong and unfiltered historic pale ale uh, crafted from a recipe found deep in our archives. You ever notice that that's always the story? Like when they when they brewed uh, Coors Batch 19, it was, we found this recipe deep in our archives. Uh, when they were doing the Ballantine's beers, it was, we found these recipes deep in our archives. Everything's always deep in the archives. You always had it. Just do it. Um, yeah, I can't read this very well. It is uh, basically a mimic of handwriting on there. And as you know, I'm blind. So, uh, yeah. I can't really make it out. Whatever. Um, if you do beer history at all, uh, the 1909 excise law would say this is probably a little over over on the ABV. I think 6 to 6.5 was, was the norm, and you didn't really see anything above that. Uh, glass, which is my cup of choice for the night. Okay, so there we go. Uh, it is unfiltered. Wow. It's a cloudy Molson beer. I mean, this is cloudier than their wheat. The head is a slight touch of off-white. It has that, like, Eggshell white, tiniest little bit of snap crackle pop, so there's not much to it. Uh, you can see my prop, the prop bucket behind me. Well, let's let's uh, let's put a prop on. Let's let's be all serious. So if Molson actually watches this, I've been very serious because I'm a very serious guy. Smell. I don't smell anything. I smell uh, foam. Ugh, there's a lot of beer foam on this. And it's really thick and it's not going away. I mean, that is a testament to the brewing of this beer, too. I mean, you have, say, Molson or Coors or Old Vienna or Carling or any of the other beers under their umbrella, and the head fades so quickly. This is actually a very visually appealing beer for me. Again, that nice orangey amber, just that beautiful orange hue, big, thick, off white head. Well, eggshell whitish head. Okay. So the bottle has that uh, telltale pale ale smell. It has that uh, that forefront of just a nice, very sweet malt that goes all the way through. Malt and caramel. There's uh, there's almost like a uh, a red ale caramel slash molasses uh, scent going on in there. And then the back end, back end has a little bit of that, uh, little, little bit of that medicinal hop scent that comes out in a lot of pale ales, and just a little bit of sweetness, a uh, sweet hop, uh, kind of uh, earthy yet sweet. Smells good. It smells good. I'm gonna have to try it though. I'm gonna have to try it. I'm hoping for a really nice beer. That's what I'm hoping for. Thank you.
I'll just put this over here so you guys can see that better because the giant rhino head is kind of casting a shadow. Can you hold my bottle open at a rhino? Yeah, there you go. Hold that for me. Cheers. You know what? That ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. Uh, reminiscent of pretty much all the, say, Ontario Pale Ales that are out there, like uh, Mill Street Tankhouse Ale, Double Troubles, uh, uh, Hops and Robbers, um, the CPA from from Old Tomorrow. Reminiscent of all those, the Opa from from uh, 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 Anita. Reminiscent of them all, but much hoppier. Like, like Double Troubles, Hops and Robbers is accessible to everybody. Where this, I think, is more more accessible to a craft beer drinker than a everybody type of thing. I don't think this is a beer that you would go to the pub and buy a picture of and share with all your buddies. I think this is a beer that somebody could go out to the pub and buy a couple pints of, but only if they really like the taste of hops. Uh, it it is kind of reminiscent as well of more more like Mill Street's uh, Tank House than the others because it is like the older style of uh, pale ales before you got all the tropical fruits and everything else that came out with all the with the like New World hops. Um, th this is real old world hop. It's it's not even really like grapefruit. It's it's old world hop. It's earthy. It's it's earthy, it's piney, it's kind of medicinal and zesty. It's it's what you'd expect from older beers. Um, slightly reminiscent of the Ballantine's IPA, to, to be honest with you, but uh, even still hoppier than that. Uh, this is probably the hoppiest beer I've had come out of Molson, and I'm actually impressed with this. It kind of reminds me of, uh, still, and I think it's better than that one, but it reminds me of... Uh, Black Creek Pioneer Village's Pale Ale, where, and you know, Black Creek, they try to uh, make things as close to, as close to, uh, historically correct as they can, and this kind of reminds me of that as well, uh, albeit again, much hoppier. I don't know if this is, uh, closer to what a IPA or a, or a pale would have been like in the day or not, I wasn't alive 106 years ago. And, uh, in all honesty, I don't know if I'd want to have been albinos that you can't, that you can't get around. Well, you know what? There probably wasn't a real big thing to get a driver's license. I could have probably drove a 19, a 19, like 14 Ford without anybody going after me. <sighs> I really like this. And... It's not even a hop profile I'm a big fan of, and I really like it. Nice sweet forefront, nice sweet multi forefront, with a touch of caramel. Just a touch of it, it's in there. It's 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 really like a, um, I can't say American, because again, it's not New World hops, but it's kind of like an American uh, red ale forefront where you get uh where you get a nice multi base and then the back end is very hoppy i i don't think i could say it's balanced per se i think it is more towards the hops than the than the malt but this is actually an intriguing beer that i'm very pumped to have gotten a chance to try <coughs> excuse me it's kind of gaseous too gaseous it makes me burp Medium carbonation, medium bodied, kind of creamy though. Um, on the light creamy side, it just kind of 
covers your tongue. Again, nice malt forefront, a little bit of caramel taste in the forefront. Reminds me of a uh, of a I, Irish red, but I, I say American red because of the hoppiness on the back end. Hoppiness on the back end, a little bit of that medicinal, what's the best way to describe it? A little bit of that medicinal, um, resiny, I chewed on a, chewed on a caffeine pill back Bone, just taking up the back of the tongue and the top of the throat, but it, unlike an actual full flown, uh, I chewed on a caffeine pill type of pale ale and IPA. It doesn't last there very long. It sits there. It makes it a little Moorish. Uh, other than that, a little bit of pine, tiny touch of like mud pie. Uh, very, very, very earthy, very foresty, with a little bit of resininess to it. And I actually. I could actually see this being what a pale ale would have been like back in the day, and a pale ale that would have survived a little bit of travel. I'm not saying traveling across the ocean or anything, but you know, like, it's been brewed in Montreal and they bring it by horseback to friggin' 1908, it would have been like train, train and stuff, but they bring it to Ottawa, they bring it to uh, Calgary, you know, I don't know if they ever went that far, I don't know what it was like back then. I gotta start reading more of Jordan St. John's books to get the history of all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy this beer. I'm actually super surprised about it. And at 325 for a 650, it is, uh, it doesn't stay on the, the Rhino. Okay. At 325 a 650, it is actually better priced than a lot of the craft beers at the same, uh, margins like the same styles, uh, better priced in the long run than say, uh, Tank House, better priced in the long run than say, uh, Hops and Robbers, better priced in the long run than say, uh, Canada Pale Ale, uh, and you're getting a higher ABV product with more hops in it, or at least more hop taste, I don't know, it, it says they use real hops, I mean there are people that don't believe anything that the big guys say, so maybe it was all hop extracts, I don't know. Uh, but it doesn't matter, this tastes fine. This tastes good. I would give this a, a, a like 325 a bottle. I would give this a, uh, you know what, uh, I'm going to say a 775 out of 10. I really enjoy this beer, it's not a bad beer at all. Uh, however, I will admit that uh, my Telltale Chug, I will not be able to do. Because... Uh, any beer that has that that has that resiny uh, resiny back of throat taste always makes me gag, and I'll get oh you gag you must not like the beer it's just what it does it's a sipping beer it's not a chugging beer you know what though fuck you guys I'll chug it I'll try to chug it there's the gag. Oh. No. 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 <coughs> See? I do things for you, the viewer, that I know I shouldn't do. And then I think to myself, why would I do something like that? And then I remember... You, the viewer, are assholes. It was really me as an asshole, but whatever. Oh man, that's doing the. Uh, that's doing the same thing. Does this have the IB you want here? That's doing the same thing to me that, uh, this is doing the same thing to me that the Green Reaper did. The hops, that resiny hop residue, is kind of making the back of my tongue expand. So, I will say this, it's a sipping beer, really good. It's a chugging beer, I think it might kill me. Thank you guys. Bye.